taking so many pictures. For most of you that are friends with her on Facebook, boy, she is keeping us updated what they're up to, so that's really neat. Um, good morning, and happy Valentine's Day. Um, I saw on Facebook this morning one of my friends said, and now I'm off to church to spend the day with my real true love, and I thought, that's pretty neat. I liked that. Um, so just some quick announcements, what's going on in church this week. Um, as always, we have our Sunday school group, um, Sunday school classes going on in the mornings. Um, Kids Church, they have taken on um, their new curriculum, and, and it talks about come along on a thrilling, chilling Arctic adventure where kids discover that Jesus' love is cool, which at two degrees outside today, I think we agree. Um, family dinner, in about a half an hour, you'll be able to smell. We are going to welcome Paula Paddock today to our pastoral staff, um, but also just to celebrate the love of Jesus. I also saw that, you know, church is not a place you go. It's a family you belong to, and I think our church rings that true all the time. Um, tomorrow morning from 9 to noon, we have our ministry of our 12 Baskets food pantry going. As always, helping hands are welcome. You can just show up. Uh, let Kelly know if you'd like to, but you're welcome to just show up if cha plans change and you have availability. Wednesday night at the Woods, men's group, our Roots youth group, Kingdom Climbers. Um, also, helping hands are, are welcome for that. If you, our kids' um, programs on Wednesday nights are really growing around here. We're doing some really awesome things. If you'd like to help in any way, shape, or form, you are welcome to do so. Uh, family game night, where the competitiveness of our church comes out. <laughs> We heard some really fun stories about that. The last one um, that we had in January was a lot of fun, as um, reports by lots of people. So we've got another one coming up on the 20th. The only recommendation is bring a finger food, but if you could avoid like super messy ones like the Doritos and Cheetos, just so people's game pieces and cards don't get real messy, that was appreciated. But come on out. Tons of fun. That's here at the church. Um, youth event, we have Winterfest coming up. For those of you that don't know, that's an all-nighter with our youth. It is really awesome. It's held in like an industrial park down in Grand Rapids. Um, plans are listed in the bulletin as far as like the leave time and what time they'll be returning. But kids, bring friends. Come to this. This is a blast. Um, it would take me weeks to recoup from an all-nighter at this point in my life. But um, <laughs> um, Paula, could you use somebody to go with you? Do you ha how are you on help to go? Um, so far, we have Pastor Mary and Tyler and I that are taking the kids. So, but if you, man, if you, if you really, really have an interest in that, yes, please come. The more, the merrier. Yep. And as Paula stated last week, um, it does cost twenty-five dollars per child. We're not really worried about that. If you can afford ten bucks, great. Fifteen, great. Five, great. None, great. You still come. Um, we have, this is a real giving, loving church. If you'd like to sponsor a child, you don't have one going, but you want to help kids go to this, um, go ahead and you can throw that in the offering with the memo that just says Winterfest on it, and we'll make sure those funds go. But this is a blast. Um, I know Pastor Phil had a lot of fun with kids from our church last year, but bring a friend. Invite friends to come, kids. And that is for, um, I believe, middle school through high school, right? It's grade 6 through 12. Yeah, okay. On the Welcome Center, there's a letter. Uh, that you can read that has all the details and the release forms that we need to have signed by the parents with some insurance information for every person that comes so please make sure that you get that you won't be able to come without one of those okay good deal and then just at the bottom of your bulletin we've got some upcoming dates coming um i know sometimes the summer especially when it's two degrees outside feels very far away but it's really not just a few months down the line we've got camp impact uh, family camp, all of our camps coming out up at Manton. So um, just some important dates in there for you to just be mindful of, paying attention to, making plans for. Um, again, our church, really, we really love to sponsor and help kids go to those camps. So if that's something maybe you want to look at your budget for um, to help some of our kids get up there to camp, that can be kind of pricey at times and for certain families, which is okay. We want these kids to go anyway. So um, go ahead and make plans, but those are some real important dates for us as well. Um, I'm not going to pass it around because there's, there's a few slots left, but just wanted to put, do a shameless plug. Um, we've got a couple empty spots on our Connection Cafe. I'm going to keep it back there, but just wanted to let everybody know we've got a few dates open, and it looks like it's in mid-March. So if we could get folks to fill those slots in, that would be great. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you did not know, by the way,
attending it or not, but today is uh, Freedom Sunday, uh, freedom from sex, slavery, trafficking, and we have a little video for you, and after the video, I've asked Ivan if he would pray uh, for our country, for this whole situation. Worship is a catalyst for action. When you come into a corporate worship service, you're coming in with a variety of other people who are fragmented, they're thinking about this and that, and some of them are worried, and some of them are really joyful, but you come together and you start doing something really strange, you start to sing. You start to sing, you start to pray, and all of a sudden God takes that focus and he starts to shape it and change it and move it and direct it to bring hope and healing and transformation to the brokenness in our world. As Free Methodists, we're heading into our sixth observance of Freedom Sunday. Some people wonder why we keep doing this year after year. I mean, don't we already know about human trafficking? The problem hasn't gone away. And the church has the potential to be on the solution side in a big way. The Free Methodists in the United States have joined up with coalitions in their local communities, working with police or social services or other churches or even themselves, finding a way to get involved in prevention, intervention, or aftercare. Freedom Sunday is about us coming together as the people of God and pursuing the mission of God to pray and sing and proclaim and give so that we can hammer slavery back into, into the history books because that's where slavery belongs, in history, not operating today. Lisa, they found him dead yesterday. He was the fifth conservative on the Supreme Court. Um, it's a crucial time in our country. It's a pivotal point in our country. I just want to read Psalm 34. I'll extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord, the Lord delivers him from them all. Protects all his bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems his servants. No one will be condemned who takes refuge in him. There's a lot of hurting people. This Human trafficking is a serious problem in the world, and it's not just in the world, it's in this country too. Father, I thank you that you are faithful. I thank you that you honor your word. 
Lord, when we come to you, you said that we should ask and believe without doubt in our hearts. Lord, we come to you because we believe that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And you are faithful. So, Father, I ask that in Jesus' name right now, you would cause the righteous to rise up. That you would set us free from the fear of man. Set us free from the fear of of the, what could happen to us. Father, help us to remember that we are to fight and defend the innocent. So Lord, help us. Help us to be everything you've called us to be. Lord, I pray that you would set people free, Lord. Lord, wherever they're at, Whatever they're going through, let them know that you're with them. Let them know that you have a plan for them. Lord, strengthen them in their faith, in their walk with you. And bring them through this darkness, Lord, that through it, there will be a testimony of your greatness. And we trust you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. I feel like the Lord's here already in a special way, uh, sensing his presence among us. And, and if there's anything, uh, if the Lord is bringing anything to anybody, I don't want to, I just feel the heaviness of the presence of the Lord. I feel like we're going to go into worship uh, with music, but if God's putting something on your heart, you need to come up and share, or you want to come pray at the altar. Uh, just feel free. Let's move in the freedom of the Spirit.
thank you for being our strength, being our cornerstone. Through the storms of life, Lord, and certainly all of us will face storms every day, all week, just living in this world, Lord. Just, there's just stuff happening all the time. There's heartbreak and hurt. And thank you that we can run into your arms and find refuge from the storm. Find you to be our cornerstone. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I want to thank you for just the opportunity of being here this morning with everybody else, but primarily with you. Thank you that it was your desire to be with us from the beginning. Always has been, is right now, and will ever be that way. So I just want to thank you for being here with us. We wanted to minister unto you from this place of love and adoration and worship. So thank you for the opportunity, Holy Spirit, to just take our offering and raise it up before the Father and the Son and let them be blessed with our love and our adoration because you are worthy. You alone are worthy to be exalted, to be adored, to be worshipped. We have some prayer concerns this morning, so if you'll just kind of stay with me for just a moment. Most of you know that the Grant's house burned to the ground last night. And if you don't, it, it, it did. And uh, so they're in dire straits. And they, uh, they need our prayers. And uh, I've asked Jim if he would pray this morning for the Grant's.
also, as we're praying, just ask the Lord how we, as a family, here at the Woods, can respond to this family in their time of crisis. And uh, Jan, would you pray for Kelly? Kelly went to the emergency a couple of times and her eardrum has broken. So would you lift her up, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Lord, you know the situation that Kelly's in. Lord, you know her concerns. You know all that's been on her heart lately. How she's reached out to others. Lord, now she needs a touch from you. Father, we ask for your healing touch, not just for her ear, Lord, but from the top of her head to the tips of her toes, Lord. If there's any infection anywhere that needs to come out, Lord, we ask that it would be healed in Jesus' name. We ask for a healing touch. We ask for the wisdom upon the, the doctors, the nurses, Lord, anybody that comes in contact with her, Lord. And we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I want to lift up Al to you this morning. You see the accident that he was in the other day. Lord, his car was totaled. Also the surgery, Father, that he's uh, went through, Lord, his rotator cuff. I just want to speak healing into his body right now. That you would grant him Godspeed healing, a supernatural touch that would cause this rotator cuff to knit together quickly, succinctly. God, I also want to lift up Donnie Ellison. You see, Father, uh, his liver, Lord, is, is pretty much done. And he needs a miracle, Father. That's the only thing that's going to turn that around. So, God, I just want to lift up Donnie to you right now and just ask in the powerful name of your son, Jesus, that you would intervene. Lord, that you would touch this liver, Lord, and anything else that's going on with him. You know, he has multiple health issues. And because of your great love for him, would you just release grace in his body that would bring about healing. Honey, would you pray for Team Haiti, please? Father, we just thank you for the privilege of sending a team to Haiti. We thank you, Lord, for um, being with them, for giving them traveling mercies there, and we trust that you're going to give them traveling mercies back home. and Just be with them the remainder of the time that they're there. Um, thank you for the connections that they've made, the t classes that have been taught, and the painting, and the other connections with um, child care and orphanages that have been made. Lord, we just want to embrace the nation of Haiti, and especially the church there that is struggling and striving to bring the light, the light that they have to shine across Haiti, Lord, that needs the light of your presence, the light of your power to spread across the land, and and drive out the enemy and bring peace and prosperity to that land and protection in the name of Jesus. So we just just continue to ask for your anointing, your power, your overshadowing of the team. Just let them um, sense your presence right now, Lord. Let them have a powerful time of worship with the Haitians today, Lord, and as Pastor Ron shares today, Lord, just anoint him. Let it go out and let it be a word of encouragement, Lord, to those that hear, that they might be built up in the most holy faith and and just see your kingdom come and your will done there in Haiti. And we just want to praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. your first name? Deborah. Deborah? Father, we want to lift up Deborah to you right now. Father, you see that she's undergone a heart attack and now she has pneumonia. Father, I want to thank you that your son, Jesus' name, is greater than heart attack, than pneumonia, than any other name. So we just speak your name right now into this situation. And we would ask, Father, that your presence would not just be with her, but she would pass over her and into her and that you would leave healing in the place of this heart attack and whatever damage that did and the pneumonia. 
And I just want to thank you for that in Jesus' name. And I want to pray for Jim Sanders too, Father. You're bringing him to my mind right now. You see the great struggle he's had after this knee surgery? Father, he needs you to touch him. He needs you to move upon him now. We agree together. You told us that we're two or three. We're gathered together in your name, Jesus. Agreeing concerning anything that we have what we ask of you. And that's what we're asking of you right now for Jim and for these others. You told us to see things that are not as though they are. And that's where we're going to live. Right here, right now. In that place of the miraculous. So thank you for hearing our cries and for attending unto our prayers. In the powerful name of your son, Jesus. Can you all say amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, as our ushers are coming forward, uh, let me just give you a praise. Uh, last week, you know that uh, a prayer request went out uh, for the Overhausers. Gene's uh, brother-in-law's grandson had come up missing, and he was found. So that's, that's just a real answer to prayer. And thank God for hearing our cries and attending on to our prayers. Lonnie, would you like to pray? Yes. 
Thank you so much, worship team. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Our junior church can be dismissed. As you know, we've been working through our nine strategies. And <clears throat> if you do not know what those are and what we're doing and what this is all about, I have one of these for you. Who did not get one of these yet? Free to be whole. Just lift up your hand. And let's see. Who can I get? Nate, would you like to sure. take these unpassels out for me? Thank you. Ty, go ahead and toss that verse up there for me. Would you please? Today we're talking about rewarding fruitfulness. And thank you very much, Nate, for doing that. <clears throat> I just want you to know that no matter who you are, where you're from, or what you have, you can make a difference. Look at me. Would you say that? I can make a difference. I can make a difference. Do you believe that? Yeah. I can make a difference. You can. You can how, ma how many of you have made a difference in someone's life? Just slip up your hand. Praise God. How many of you would like to do it again? And again? And again? <laughs> Amen. One of the really big things about this morning's message is you're going to make a difference and you're going to continue to make a difference with your life if we can learn how to identify and take advantage of the opportunities that God is offering to us. So would you close your eyes with me for just a moment? Holy Spirit, just like Jesus prayed, I ask that you would give us not only ears to hear but eyes to see what you're doing, what you've got going on. Would you just allow us to be able to step out of the physical realm of things and into the spirit realm where spiritual things are taking place and allow us to see what you've got going on because that's your invitation for us to partner with you as change agents to bring your kingdom in. So I want to thank you for those opportunities that you give us and are going to continue to do so in a powerful name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Take a look at our verse. Cutting right into the middle of Matthew 25. And he also, who had the two talents, came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done. Well done. Done. Good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. This is just a simple little story, a simple parable. This individual is given a couple of talents from God. He takes them and uses them, and in so doing, he doubles them, multiplies them. You know what that's called? That's called being fruitful. Fruitful. We've all been given something from Christ to do for Christ. Just like this individual in our parable. And we all have the same choice as to whether we will use our talents or hide them. Here's the difference maker. God's Holy Spirit is an entrepreneur. How many of you know what that word means? God's Holy Spirit is an entrepreneur. He knows how to bring something out of nothing. He knows how to initiate and cause things to take place that normally would not take place. And, and this is where it gets exciting because he knows where you fit into the plan of God. He knows God's purpose for your life. He knows your destiny. And by the way, Jeremiah says that God has good plans, great plans for you with a hope and a future. 
That's God's design, and that's God's desire to bring all of this about. So here's God's Holy Spirit entering into the mix of all that God has going on. And what he will do, Wayne, is he will take the talents that God has given to you, or to you, Sam, or to you, Carrie, or to you, Gary. He will take those talents that God has given to you and bring things to pass. And let me just expand on that. He will accomplish things through you that you've never dreamed of. Not even in your wildest imagination. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will take of what is mine and make it known unto you. So he will use you in ways that you've never imagined if. And here's our operative word this morning. If you will yield to his lordship. Stay with me now. If you'll yield to his lordship, and that's going to look like this. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. The flesh is simply another way, another means to live life. That is unauthorized by God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's drawing upon your own resources to try to do life, to try to live life, and to try to accomplish the things that God is asking you to accomplish, but without his power, without his giftings. And so it's basically you trying to come up with everything on your own. And God is simply saying that no flesh will be exalted in his sight. So he's offering us the opportunity to daily walk by his spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of this other source of life that is appalling to God. And you will hear, well done. I just want that to sink in for just a moment. Well done. You have been a good and faithful servant. Now, that little word walk right there, but I say walk by the Spirit, as it's used in this verse means yield to Him and allow Him to order your inner and outer life. Put Him in charge, Jim. That's what it means. To put Him back on the throne in your life. And he'll begin to organize your inner world. And by the way, without him doing that, we are in a state of chaos. And as your inner world becomes ordered under the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ through his spirit, your outer world will begin to look like he has destined it to look. That's exciting to me. That's just simply God using us. Let me say that another way. Being led or walking by the Spirit means you will see what the Father is doing. Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself except for what I see the Father doing. And as you allow the Holy Spirit to live and lead through you, you will begin to see, Holly, what God is doing around about you. He will shift, transpose, so to speak, walk you out of the physical realm and allow you to begin to see into the spirit realm into what he has got going on. Tim, I don't think there's anything more exciting than that. God is saying, join me in the greatest thing going on in the entire created order. <laughs> the salvation of souls, Ivan. The expanding of his kingdom. And if there's one thing you will want to hear at the end of all things, it's this. Well done, Toby. Well done. You have been a good and faithful servant. Have you ever had somebody say that to you? Well done. Or have you ever said that to somebody? And just, you know what that does inside of you? When somebody just comes up to you, looks you dead in the eyes says, 
well done. You did a good job up there playing the guitar and the violin. You did a great job leading in that song. That was well done. I, that goes off inside of me. That resonates, Ivan, inside of me. It's like a father coming to his son after he's taught him something, and all of a sudden it unfolds before you. He's doing what I showed him to do. <laughs> he's getting it right. Milt, there's nothing like that. When we were over there putting a the tin on the parsonage, your boy was over there, and he was doing a great job, and he was doing it right, wasn't he? That felt good as a father, didn't it? This is God. This is God moving into the equation. And he's looking at you, Jim, and he's saying, you did a great job, son. Well done. Well done. And the second thing you're going to want to hear is, you've been faithful. You've been faithful over a little. Now, some people have a problem right here. They don't want the little stuff that God's offering to them. Right? They, they want the big stuff. They want to start out big and strong. But that, that, that's not how this starts out. That's the opposite of what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is looking for us to be faithful in the little things. That's where he starts us out. With the little stuff. And sometimes we don't really like that. I remember when my mother had Alzheimer's and they weren't taking care of her like I thought they should have. And I never thought I would be able to do this as a person, to clip her toenails, to clean out under her fingernails and stuff like that. To me, that was something that was unimaginable to my mind, but when you love somebody, it's amazing the things that you want to do to serve them, the little things. And because you have been faithful with a little, he is saying, I will set you over much. That's called an increase, Bruce. That's called more fruitfulness. Jesus said, you will have fruit, much fruit, and fruit that will abide. It's going to last. What you're accomplishing in this lifetime is going to make it into the next one. That's, that's exciting. That's exciting. Thirdly, and, th and this is like the topping. You know, this is like that, that stuff that's on top of lattes. What's that called? Yeah. Or you go to get a Sunday, Diane. Do you like, you like Sundays? But how many like banana splits? Yeah, I mean, and they just, they just whip it up, the top of it. And how many of you like the cherries on top? That's what this one is right here. He, you've, I mean, well done. You've been a good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will make you faithful over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Did you know that the joy of the Lord is your strength? The joy of the Lord is your strength. There's something about that. There's something positive about living off the joy of the Lord. That person is contagious. You want to be around them, Mindy, because they've got something, someone, that you want. And his name is Jesus. And that's not just talking about the hereafter of entering into the presence of the Lord and heaven and glory and all the rest of that. That's talking about experiencing the joy of the Lord right here and right now. And this is way beyond happiness. Happiness is connected to situations and circumstances that go your way, in your favor. But the joy of the Lord is something internal. And it's, and it's a gift. It's a free gift, Carrie. The joy of the Lord. Don't you like it when you see somebody like that? It's not artificial. It's not fake. It's just, it's real. Sometimes God calls us to be faithful without seeing very much fruit in our lifetime. Prophets, it was like that. Some of the prophets, they did not see one salvation, and yet they remained faithful. That, that, that's tough. That's a tough place to be in. And then there's this time factor where it, sometimes we just don't see any fruit at all. 
When I was in Rose Lake, when we were in Rose Lake, it was a rough field. I, uh, I got in trouble because I went against one of the treasurers, and I went over to his house to deal with the situation, and he pointed to his gun on the wall. And I just said, well, okay. He said, one of them's got a bullet in it, and I'm not going to tell you which one. Any of you have had that happen as a pastor? So anyway, your mom, Kareen, and Tony Verhe went there next. And I think he pretty much told them the same thing. Anyway, that got me in a little bit of trouble. And uh, it was, I, I, I felt it was time for me to leave the church. You know, I just, you know, it just wasn't going well. And so I asked if I could be moved, and uh, God had other plans. And I remember that Sunday, pretty much everybody thought I was gone. And I don't know, it appeared that they might be happy about that. Uh, I stood up before them all, and Wayne, I said, I know who your new pastor is. And they were all smiling and all happy. And I said, it's me. <laughs> you get me for another year. And that did not go over well at all. And so, you know, that put me on my knees and on my face. And I just said, man, God, that's really not what they wanted. And I'm not sure what I want right now. And he came to me and he said, will you be faithful in the midst of barrenness? You know what that, that translated to me? Is will you go out and continue to try to reach people for me? Even though all this other thing is going on, I'm greater than that, and my life in you and through you, you can do this. So you know what I did, brother? I mapped out in my mind about a 10-mile radius, and I just started going from house to house to house. And, and two people in that year came to the Lord one was a severe alcoholic who just suddenly came down with cancer. I mean, this guy had about a thousand cats in his house. And I'm not kidding. You know, he was cat man. It, you know, it was amazing, this guy. And I would just go visit him, drive him to the little store <laughs> over in Dighton. Remember that store? Anyway, when he came down with the cancer, I went over and talked to him. And I had the opportunity to lead him to the Lord. You know, his name was Elton. And uh, Elton McIntyre, I believe, was his name. And then there was another individual who lived just down the road a little bit farther. And he was the father of a pastor. And he was hardcore. You know, I just knocked on his door and tried to be his friend. Well, lo and behold, he liked rocks. He had a rock polishing machine in his place. And so he would polish And I like rocks. And so we struck up a friendship. And I, I was allowed by the Lord to lead him into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Who knows what God wants to do? The Woods has a track record of transformational preaching, teaching, and leading. This church is blessed, has been blessed with godly leadership. Look at Wayne back there. I mean, what a faithful, Wayne right over there. And Ron and Janet, they were faithful. I mean, their preaching was excellent, was it not? It was great. I should have said that last week. Salvations, baptisms, and transformational growth are becoming regular occurrences here because of the life that's in the woods, and it's the life of Christ. And those things need to continue. And you know what? The woods... We're going to celebrate the evidence of fruitfulness like Jesus did. And you know what? That's going to inspire us because it inspires him. It encourages growth and fruitfulness. We're going to share the stories of our leaders, of our ministries that exemplify multiplication and transformation because it isn't just about one person, unless it's the person of Jesus Christ living his life through us, doing what he does best. Lead people into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Skip, there's nothing better than that. <laughs> and we're going to resource our leaders and our ministries. And we are going to help them be fruitful. So I'm going to stop with this thought. Let me jump this up here. Jesus said, I am the vine. 
you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, somebody say it. Nothing. Nothing. Here he is. Jesus is the true vine. You know what? He just wants to live his life through you. And guess what? That's what you're going to get. You're going to get some fruit, and that's exciting to me. Honey, would you like to come up and share? I just got done writing my notes. <laughs> Can I have that water? I just asked Joe if I could share a little bit at the end um, when we were kind of praying over this and working on it, thinking of about the theme of fruitfulness. I thought, you know, uh, it's kind of hard sometimes when we go to annual conference and they're rewarding all the churches that have had increase in numbers or, and you haven't and you just feel like, oh, and you've been faithful, you know. You've just laid it down, you've been faithful. So um, I said, let's add faithfulness. Let's, re you know, rewarding fruitfulness and faithfulness because um, sometimes the fruit isn't seen right away, right? Um, like the scripture says, some plant, some water, and, and some harvest. God, it's God that brings the increase, right? And it's him that gets all the glory and honor. Um, but often, you know, the Lord uses agricultural or agrarian terms to bring forth truths like, plants and trees and vineyards and farming and such. And uh, we want to be healthy, fruitful, and multiplying, don't we? Pastor Janet shared with us about numbers matter to God. I mean, he said, go forth and be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So we don't want to um, downplay fruitfulness. If, we, if we're not growing, we're not healthy, right? If we're not reproducing, we're not healthy. But um, there is something to be said for faithfulness. And uh, I just want to encourage you to just be conti continue to be faithful in what God's put on your heart to do, whether that's in the church or outside of the church. Sometimes if you're calling us to the church, and I know definitely the Lord has come to me and said, I've given you to the church, Mary, and so I know that's where he wants me to minister. Not that I'm not going to minister to anybody out there, but I know that he has said, this is, I want you to be here equipping and helping and um, but some people don't, their ministry isn't necessarily right in the church. You don't see it. They may feel really called out into the world, and we need to be salt and light in the world, you know, like the salt shaker getting out there into the world. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to look at that idea of plants. You know, some plants um, come up quickly, uh, like annuals. They come up, maybe petunias, you know, they produce their fruit really gloriously and fabulously for one season and then they're gone and and fruits and veg or fruits you know I mean vegetables green beans and such they come up every season and they um, serve their purpose and then they're gone and you have to replant those every year and then you have perennials you have different kinds of plants and y you also have fruit trees that don't produce right the first year you plant them they don't produce you have to fertilize them and water them and, and uh, prune them and then I don't know how, you guys probably, some of you know better than I at what point fruit trees begin to produce fruit. And then you have the mighty oak tree that from a little oak, you know, it doesn't reach maturation until many, many years and they can live up to 150 years and more. There's actually a tree down in Mississippi, I believe, oak tree that's 1,500 years old, they figure. So just looking at that, you know, as a as a something to encourage you, um, you may be somebody who just pops up and you uh, you have quick fruit. You may be that person that's just as faithful, as steady, as just keeps planting and watering. Or you might you might reap what somebody else planted. And so it's all about the kingdom, isn't it? It's all about His work and God bringing the increase and God getting the glory and me being the servant along the way, whether I see the fruit. You know, as Joe talked about earlier, a lot, of, a lot of times the prophets, they didn't, often they did not see the fulfillment of the word that the Lord put on their hearts. They would preach and preach and preach and be persecuted and killed and martyred, and they didn't see. Um, King David wanted to build the temple for the Lord. It was in his heart to be the one to build the temple. 
Um, but God said, no, you're a man of blood. I'm going to use your son. Your son's going to bring, he's going to be the one that builds the temple for my glory. And, you know, that's hard. But David is still, he didn't turn from God. He didn't say, well, fine, I'm not going to serve you anymore. He just kept being faithful. And Moses, who led those complaining Israelites through the promised land and 40 years in the wilderness, and he didn't get to go into the promised land. Uh, but Joshua and Caleb took those that were willing to go in. Um, so just faithfulness, you know, just keep being faithful where you're planted. And I just wanted to end with this. Did you want to grab that basket? Or, oh, you got it. <laughs> That's right before me. Um, Yeah, I, the other thing I was thinking about, potatoes and carrots, the fruit that grows underground, you know. So just let your mind imagine, you know, all that, the whole plant kingdom and how God relates that to his kingdom and, and where you fit into that and just be, uh, if you're a lemon, then make lemonade. <laughs> Add a little sugar. Just be who you are. In Christ, you know that. I think Emily posted something like that. Just I like that, this be beautiful. You see that saying? I don't know if it was just like that, but I love that. It's be you, be beautiful, be you. You're the only one that can be you, like Dr. Seuss. I was reading that the other day, too. Does anybody know that? You, you're the only one that can be you, anyways. And bloom where you planted. But I wanted to, just this verse is always encouraging. If you're... Uh, ministering for the Lord. You have that heart to minister and serve for the Lord and be faithful and be fruitful. Is uh, Galatians 6, 9. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. And we just wanted to close with a video just to just say thank you for giving to the Lord. You don't know um, whose life you're touching and uh, just encourage you to continue to be faithful. This is prophetic. As the song is playing, we want each of you to come on up, grab a piece of fruit here, and it, it's a prophetic thing this morning because I believe, we believe that this physical representation is going to, by the grace of God, propel us into that spiritual realm where God's going to bring some more fruit forth from our lives. So, Father, I want to thank you. Go ahead, Ty, start us off. Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity in the name of Jesus to be blessed and to be a blessing. Amen. Come on up. Missionary came to church. His pictures made you. 
Don't forget that we have a little party going on back there, pop log. Stand up with me, would you please? Let's just be thankful for just a moment together. I want you to think about that person, at least one person. And why don't you just thank the Lord for that person? And then let's just take a moment and thank the Lord. I want to thank you that you've given us everything we need for life and for godliness. And you find so many ways to give that to us and to distribute that through us. So I just want to thank you for each and every one here. And I just, want, I just want to pray favor and blessing upon them. That everywhere they go, everyone they meet, that the love of Jesus would just ooze out of them upon everyone around them. Because that's what's going to draw them. That's what's going to draw them. They'll know that we are your followers, your disciples, by the love that we have for you and for one another. So thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I am so glad you did. I am so glad.